Hello everyone, this is Dr. Esperanza and welcome to my channel. At kung bago kayo sa channel ko, please like and subscribe na kayo sa channel ko para mas marami ako mga students na matulungan tulad nyo. So today we're going to be working on compound statements and connectives, ilan sa mga operations involving set logic. So kailangan malaman natin yung mga statements at ano yung mga uri na mga simple statement sa set logic. So ang simple statement, yan yung mga sentences na iisa lang yung idea with no connecting words. Examples ng mga simple at basic statements would be today is Monday, Jane is eating a pie, and three, Bob tries dancing today. So yan yung mga simple at basic statement na tinatawag natin sa logic. Yung mga compound statements naman, yan yung mga combinations ng two or more simple statements na gumagamit ng mga connectives. At ang mga connectives or mga common connectives na ginagamit natin sa set logic would be and, or, if, then, at saka if and only if. So, umpisahan natin yung pagbuo ng mga compound statements galing sa mga basic sentences or statements using the end operation or yung end statement. According to the definition, if P or statement P and statement Q are two simple statements, then the compound statement P and Q will be symbolized using this particular symbol. P with this particular symbol, ito yung end symbol Q. So, ito yung ating gagamiting symbol para mag-connect ng dalawang basic statements. So, let's say meron tayong dalawang statements. Statement P at statement Q. Yung first statement, sabi doon, it is after 5 p.m. At yung second statement, which is Q, they are working. So, kung gagamitin natin tong P and Q at gagawin natin siyang compound statement, tulad ng A and B dito sa ating example, Paano daw natin gagawing symbolic form yung dalawang examples using the connectives na end? So yung first statement natin ay, it is after 5 p.m. and they are working. So kung ang P ay yung it is after 5 p.m. at yung Q ay they are working, using the end operation na gagamitan natin ng ganitong symbol, ang magiging symbolic form ng ating statement would be P and Q given by this particular symbol. At yung letter, yung second statement naman, it is after 5 p.m. and they are not working, gagamitan naman natin ng negation yung second statement which is statement Q. So kung iti-change natin siya sa symbolic logic, ito ay magiging P and not Q. So yan yung dalawang paraan ng pag uh, gawa or pag-transform pag ng dalawang statements using connectives sa symbolic logic. So, ilan sa mga words or statements na ginagam ginagamitan natin ng ganitong operation or end operation would be as follow. So, yung mga connectives tulad ng end, but, yet, nevertheless, yan yung mga common um, connectives na ginagamit natin para sa symbol na end. Tutungo naman tayo ngayon sa second example or second part ng ating connective which is yung OR statements. So paggawa ng compound statements using the OR statements, tinatawag din itong disjunction. So disjunction is a compound statement formed using the inclusive or represented by this symbol. So yung opposite naman ng end, yung parang letter V, would be your OR operation sa ating compound statements. So kung meron tayong dalawang statements, Pwede natin gamitin yung symbol na ito para sa P or Q or both. So ito ay pwede natin gamitan na symbolize or symbol na P or Q using the symbol V. So yung symbol natin ang gagamitin natin sa dalawang examples natin sa statements natin na bago. So yung ating bagong P and Q would be the first statement P, the bill receives majority approval. At yung second statement na Q, the bill becomes a law. So kung dito sa dalawang statements na to, gagamitan natin siya ng OR operation para maging compound statement siya. Paano daw natin itatransform yung ating statements or compound statements into a symbolic form? So the first statement is the bill receives majority approval or the bill becomes law. So since yung first statement natin na P ay may kaakibat na second statement na Q, since gumagamit tayo ng OR operation, pwede natin siyang i-transform into P or Q given by the symbolic logic. At yung second statement naman, the bill receives majority approval, which is P statement, 
or the bill does not become a law or yung Q statement but yung ating Q ngayon ay ganamitan natin ng negation na not so that means yung ating symbolic logic would be P or not. Q. So, yan yung paggamit uh, natin ng mga symbols na natutunan natin sa set logic para gamitan ng symbolic form yung ating compound statements. Yung pangatlong statement naman natin ay yung if-then statement. So, sa compound statement na to, yung if P, then Q, ay sinisymbolize naman ng arrow going to Q. So, ito yung P, then Q, can be represented by this particular arrow. Now, yung arrow natin yan na P and Q, meron siyang form na ginagamit. Yung ating antecedent, which is yung statement P, should always be followed by the, or yung ating antecedent, arrow, and then yung consequent. Kasi meron tayong dalawang different statements na tinatawag. So, kapag ka yung ating statement ay merong arrow before or yung statement natin before the arrow, yun yung tinatawag nating antecedent. At yung statement natin after the arrow, yun naman yung tinatawag nating consequent. So, hindi natin siya pwedeng um, pagbalik ta rin dahil meron tayong antecedent at consequent na tinatawag. So, paano ba natin gagamitin tong if-then statement sa dalawang statements na bubuoyin natin as compound statements? So, let's say meron tayong statement P, a person is a father, at statement Q, a person is a male, kung gagamitan natin ng uh, compound statement na if then, itong dalawang statements na to, tulad ng letter A, if a person is a father, then the person is a male. So, since yung uh, statement P natin ay nauna, then statement Q natin yung susunod. So, ang ating symbolic logic form for this particular statement would be P, then Q. So, if P, then Q. So, ito yung ating symbolic form ng ating first statement or first compound statement. Yung second compound statement naman, if a person is not a male, then the person is not a father. So, when this happens, gagamitan naman natin ng negation yung ating statement 1 at negation din sa statement 2. So, ang ating symbolic logic dito, since yung ating First statement, yung ating antecedent ay naging Q na, which is a person is a male, but this time not a male. Pwede natin tong gawing not Q, then not P. So, pwede nating mabaliktad ngayon yung ating uh, statement dahil inuna natin yung second statement dito sa ating second example ng compound statement. So, yan yung paggamit ng symbol na arrow going to the consequent para i- uh, perform yung if-then statement natin sa ating compound statement. Now, ilan sa mga examples ng uh, if-then statements na gagamitin natin ay yung may mga connectives na then, if, is sufficient for, is necessary for, only if, and only if Q, tapos yung P. So, yan yung iba't ibang mga combinations na pwede natin gamitin dun sa ating examples kanina na statement P and statement Q na kung saan yung mga symbolic logic niya ay pare-parehas P then Q dahil sa mga connectives na ginamit natin na similar sa word na then. At yung susunod naman nating uh, connective na gagamitin would be the if and only if statements. Yung if and only if statements, nag apply naman siya sa mga biconditional statements na kung saan yung biconditional statements are conditional statement statements that are true if the statement is still true when the antecedent and the consequent are reversed. So kapag pinag-reverse daw natin yung antecedent at saka yung consequent at yung ating statement ay parehas paling true statement, so pwede natin gamitin yung if and only if na symbol para sa ating statement. So, ilan sa mga conditional statements na pwede natin gamitan ng if and only if statements would be this particular example. If a person is a father, then that person is a male, which is we know is a true statement. Kapag binaliktad natin ngayon yung P and Q, ang magiging itsura ng ating, condition, ng ating compound statement would be if a person is a male, then that person is a father. 
It may not always be true, but usually it's true. So, ibig sabihin, pwede natin pagbaligta rin yung ating antecedent at saka yung ating consequent. At kapag nangyari yun, pwede natin isulat na P and then if and only if Q. So, gagamitan natin siya ng arrow na may dalawang arrow sa end. So, ito yung ating uh, symbol na ginagamit para sa if and only if statements at gusto natin siyang gawing compound statements given two basic statements. Now, another example of this would be if a person is an unmarried male, then that person is a bachelor. So, ito yung true statement natin na kapag wala daw asawa yung lalaki, siya daw ay matatawag na bachelor. At kung pagbabalik ta rin natin yung ating antecedent at saka yung consequent, yung consequent magiging antecedent at yung antecedent ay magiging consequent, ang ating statement would be if a person is a bachelor or if a person is a bachelor male, then that person is unmarried. So when this particular statement is formed, we know na true din yung ating statement. So, kapag ka, pwede natin pagbalikta rin yung antecedent at saka yung uh, consequent at parehas at naging true statement pa rin siya, pwede natin siyang gamitan ng if and only if symbol which is given by P if and only if Q using yung arrow na nakikita nyo sa ating symbol. So, ito yung mga paraan kung paano natin gamitin yung mga connectives na ginamit natin sa compound statements at ilan sa mga connectives na yan yung conjunction, disjunction, conditional at saka yung biconditional statements na tinatawag at yung negation natin na pinapag-aralan natin nung nakaraan ay pwede rin natin gamitin or incorporate dito sa ating mga connectives at tulad rin ng math operations or ilan sa mga math operations pwede natin gamitin ng two or more connectives or two or more operations ang mga statements or basic statements na tinatawag at yun yung susunod natin lesson pagkatapos nito.